Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Ring of Honor wrestling review with us, the British Fist. Touching. I am Mr. Parkin, and this guy sitting next to me is none other than NJ. What's up? Make sure you guys subscribe above as usual, like this video as usual, and put your thoughts on the show if indeed you saw it down in the comment section below. And make sure you contact us in the link in the script box below. Now, with this being the penultimate show before Final Battle, we expected some very good Final Battle hype tonight, seeing as it is on the 23rd of December. Go to irohwrestling.com if you want to know more, of course. Um, first couple of things we want to get out of the way first here is, I just want to know, and I think you might do too, where are all the other ROH Wrestling reviews? I want to know, are there any other people that review the TV show? Because from what I've seen, only me, or not me, sorry, only us, um, you know, Off The Road Show and LV are the only people that really ever review the show. I want to know if there's any other reviews out there, especially people that promote ROH as if it's a great product. Because the thing is, we can talk about WWE, we can talk about TNA, when it comes to ROH, we kind of lack, there's not enough people there yeah. that are actually making videos that we can talk about. And we want to know other people's opinions, because we know our, our opinion isn't right, or always right, as it's an opinion. We do want to know other people's opinions, and we want to see other reviews. So if you know anyone out there, or if you are if you've got someone out there that does reviews and you're seeing this video, let us know, because we just want to see other people's opinions on this. Um, and another thing we want to address is the ROH crowds. You know, I know these crowds sit through four four TV shows worth of tapings, but sometimes they just, they make, they, they, they lack, don't they, the crowds sometimes? When you're watching a wrestling show, you do want it to be good announcing, good matches, good storyline, all that, but the crowd needs to be there with the match too to give it the hype and feel to it. Yeah, because the crowd adds that much more to the match, doesn't it? And I know we see it sometimes in, in WWE and a lot more in TNA where they have to pump in crowd noise, but... You know, the whole, the whole part of the show is that you wish you were there. And the ROH crowds at the moment just aren't giving me that. Do you know what I mean? They're not making enough noise sometimes, sometimes when they really need to. That's very true, especially when it comes to the rest of the staff are actually well known, mm. or you get behind. Yeah. You just expect more from the crowd. Um, just, just a couple of things there before we get into the review. Now, first, the first thing we got in this, in this ROH TV show this week was a video package from that awesome Steam segment from last week. Boy, reliving that was, uh, was pretty good, wasn't it? It was a good thing to show because obviously that's the biggest thing that's going on in ROH at the minute, yeah. as well as the titles that are going on. But this was the biggest storyline. And we get the announcement that the main event is going to be the World's Greatest Tag Team versus the All Night Express in a proven ground match. We did have this last week. I'll just say this to you too, Andy. I want to ask you this question. Um, is promoting a wrestling match enough to make you want to watch a show next week? Or does it need a little bit more, do you think? I think it needs a little bit more, because obviously they can do what they want. They can announce stuff, get us thinking, oh, that could be a good match. But I think there needs to be more to it for us to actually get behind okay. it and want it more. This is one of the issues with RX TV show. They need to give us a little bit more to look forward to, like storylines and stuff like that. You know, to really look forward to, rather than just matches. Because there's only so much you can do. Just a little, just a little point there. Um... The first thing we got of the show was an interview segment with Caprice Coleman and Cedric Alexander talking about the Briscoes and how they're trying to make a name for themselves. You know, I don't know, I think it's, who is it, Cedric Alexander, who actually does all the talking for this. He, he's not a bad talker. When they first came in, I was a little bit eh, but now I kind of see that they have a decent talker there in, I believe it's Cedric Alexander, the one who, who puts his hands on the shoulder and everything like that. Um, so it wasn't a bad interview segment. At least they're giving them interview time to at least get their character across. That's what I like. Right before every match, they have the people who are in the match have time on mic to hype them up, like maybe get some more towards the match. Yeah, indeed. And we all know about the Harlem, the Harlem brother, the Har Harlem Lancelot. They look like Justin Bieber lookalikes. So we didn't need an interview segment from them. Um, Caprice Coleman and Cedric Alexander versus the Bravados is our opening match. These two teams are going to be involved in a, in a tag team gauntlet match for the number one contendership um, at Final Battle. They didn't say anything about it, though. They really need to. I mean, come, surely they've got a pay-per-view coming up soon. They've got an eye pay-per-view coming up soon. Let's get... I mean, they were talking about the TV title, the ROH World title match, but they didn't They didn't talk about this match at all. It's disappointing me a little bit because it's a match I'm actually looking forward to. I love ROH's same tag team division. Same here. They should have done more to this. Be a bit more fair to them because they are wrestlers that I hope are going to become something bigger in mm. ROH as time goes yeah. on. Uh, the match itself went about six minutes. It was it was decent action. It was a, it was a decent opener, in my opinion. Uh, Coleman and Alexander get the win, and it does look like ROH see something in these guys. I remember when they first wrestled against World's Great Tag Team, we didn't see too much in them. But I must admit, I was quite impressed by what they were doing in this match. It seems like they're kind of gelling a little bit more the more the more they get on TV. Well, the way I see it, when they first started, I couldn't see them working oh. well together a bit out of it. But as the week's gone on, especially this week, they're a lot better. They're working well as a tag team, and obviously they win and people to win. And it's making me looking forward to that gauntlet match. I really am looking forward to it. What, five or six tag teams in there in a gauntlet match. I'm looking forward to that. Should be good. We saw the future shocking young buck, young bucks last week, and if that wasn't enough, we got this. So it's a decent opener. I'll give it that. I enjoyed it. Um, the next, the next, we had a well, we had a match. We had TJ Perkins versus Chris Silvio. But before we got to this match, we had interviews with both Chris Silvio and TJ Perkins. And I'll just ask you this, NJ. Out of the two interviews we got, Silvio and TJ Perkins, 
Who did you like more? Chris. Why is that? Uh, he's just got more of an out there character. Yeah, exactly. The other one's just got boring, but he just stands there talking straight to the camera. And that's the point I want to make. A guy like Chris Silvio can offer something different to ROH because we've seen how TJ Perkins, his interview was boring ass, it was bland, it was just eh, meh, meh. Whereas Chris Silvio added some character to his interview. He added something to his interview which we could be entertained by. And it was the same with this match as well. And this, in my opinion, is a massive problem with ROH. Is that they've got a guy like TJ Perkins. Yes, he's got a kind of unique style. Yes, he can work a good match. But he's your typical 200 pound, five foot 10 spot monkey. And you know, I really, I really think it does show ROH's philosophy that they're making Perkins beat guys like Silvio and Mondo, guys that have some sort of character who can offer something different. It shows me that they really haven't got out of that box that they're in at the moment, which is just having five foot 10 spot monkeys all the fucking place. No, I think, to be honest, I won't really be behind Chris anyway, just because yeah. I think his character's a bit too out there. Yeah. But again, he does have more of a character in this match. It was shown, and TJ Perkins, he can wrestle, but he's just not as like we were saying. Mm. The wrestler that needs to be worked on because there are other wrestlers that need to be built up too. It's a typical thing here where you get like the wrestler versus the character, and sometimes when you're trying to appeal to a new audience, which let's not forget, this TV show, need, this TV show is doing and needs to do. You kind of need to show some of these characters. And even though I think Chris Silvio was just he was just done to job in this match, I'd like to see a little bit more of him. Maybe, maybe you know, define his character a little bit more. Um, this match itself, TJ Perkins and Sylvia, was a decent match. It helped. It's it was hell. It, held, it was a third match on an ROH show, which kind of helped the flow a little bit, didn't it? Um, so you know, we saw Perkins' finisher, which we didn't see when he was against Mondo. So I kind of like that. Um, it was a it was a decent match. It, well, it was a decent match to fill the time. Well, I say the first match was good. This match, I weren't really into it. I didn't find this match that entertaining. And then there was the main event, which was better. Yeah, we had TJ Perkins is facing Michael Elgin at the IPPU, which is essentially a kind of filler match, just putting two guys together. I do like Michael Elgin. You know, I can understand why people like TJ Perkins, but this is essentially going to be a filler match. So I guess giving Michael Elgin a win and TJ Perkins a win on TV kind of makes sense, even though they're not really in any kind of feud at the moment. True, yes. Um, after that match, we get a final battle countdown, uh, basically an inside ROH segment. Um, we got the, we got the, I, I kind of like how they're sort of trying to advertise, I mean, I know they've done this a lot, but they're kind of now emphasizing the fact that we've got matches at Final Battle and we're trying to hype up some, you know, what the fuck is going to happen because we had a recap of the TV, how the TV title matches happened. We had like, what, three TV segments where Jay Lethal won the title, Bennett came close to winning, and then we had all the kind of stuff, we had all the different segments there which were involved and we had, you know, interviews afterwards as well. I think that was pretty good because obviously they're hyping that up brilliantly. They've yeah. shown the past, they've shown... How, why this match is happening, and they had their own say. I thought it was nicely done. Yeah, and we will be doing a preview, a preview of Final Battle on our ne after our next TV show, um, after our next RX Wrestling review, which will be next week. So make sure you guys check that out too. We got words from Mike Bennett talking about how he's in the ring with two losers. I love Mike Bennett, and then we had words from Jay Lethal. He wants to make a statement of Final Battle and wants a definitive end, as there's not been any kind of definitive end to it. So I, I do look forward to the TV time match. I really do. Well, I've said bad things about Inside RH in the past, but this opening of the Inside RH was nicely done. I liked it. It's mm. got me wanted to see the match now. It, it, it did go on for a long time, but it, it was telling us what was going on. It was telling us the story of how these three guys are going to meet in the ring. So it, it's it's just a shame that they had to follow up with the Eddie Edwards and Eddie Richards bullshit that they do, especially. Just showing, I mean, it was, I'll give it, it was short this week. The inside, the inside RX segment overall was a lot shorter, and, this, and the whole thing with, with Eddie Edwards, even though his bland, boring-ass character that we just can't care about, at least the damn thing was short, and we just had a couple of words, and that was it. Yeah, that's about it, yeah. And I'm really not looking forward to that, that match, but I know it would be a great match, but god damn. Um, so that was the Inside RX segment. Didn't really stop the flow of the show too much this week, did it? Not a lot. It was, again... Less than normal. The first part of it was effective. The second one was just short and sweet. So I think it did the point. I think they should maybe spread these different sections throughout the show. Maybe not have it all in one. Maybe have like one here and one down there, like hyping up the two different matches. Just an idea. It would have been, but I think getting it all done in one go, I think it was just make a flow of the show better. We have the announcement that Davey Richards and Michael Elgin in a proving ground match is going to be is going to happen next week, and we have an interview with Davey Richards. Um, I don't really remember what he said, just talking about Roderick Strong when he's, I guess, facing and he's facing Michael Elgin. Yeah, there weren't a lot to it. Again, it weren't the best part of ROH. It was just short and sweet, giving, the, mm. giving a bit add-on to their rivalry. I don't really know. Again, is this enough to make you want to watch the next week's show, just having one match announced? Not really, no. No, exactly. They need a little bit more than that. Um, but this main event match, we got the main event, which was announced last week, World's Greatest Tag Team, or sorry, Wrestling's Greatest Tag Team now, due to copyright. Versus All Night Express in a Proving Ground match. Um, 
I like how ROH can always, apart from maybe one week when we had Caprice Coleman, Cedric Alexander versus Wells Grace Tatum in that crap match, you know, they usually put on a great main event, don't they? And that's what I like about ROH. You can always sort of get a good main event out of it, out of the show. Well, with the uh, wrestling great tag team, we do expect good wrestling, mm. flow through the match, show their skills off. And actually, they did help the... Uh, all night express. For, for, yeah. yeah, so I thought it was nice. Um, what have you, I mean, a lot of people have been complaining that all night that um, World's Greatest Tag Team haven't been, you know, doing their best. But let's face it, guys, they're a name. They're a name that people, you know, can can have seen in WWE. So it makes sense to make these guys tag team champions. It makes sense to have these, you know, in the main event of the show. And it makes sense for them to be on the on the upper card of final battles. So it was a nice tag team match. The the highlight of the match was Briscoe's coming in and and hitting Shelton Benjamin with the chair. That was pretty good. I like, at least it's kind of hype for their feud at Final Battle, which I, one of the reasons I liked it. The thing I like about this match is, again, I've said it in the past weeks, both tag teams had different spots throughout the match. It made it entertaining. Good wrestling from them. There's obviously the uh, Briscoe's interference added more to the ending and yeah. helped the All Night Express appear with. It added something that ROH desperately needs, and that is some storylines to their segments. And it did that very well. They allowed the, the chair shot to shout and allowed a ANX to get the pin on Charlie Haas. So... So two weeks before their IP pay per view match um, between the Briscoes and the World's Greatest Tag Team, um, All Night Express have 90 days to cash in a title shot, but they're involved in a number one contendership gauntlet match. So would you, I, if I, if it was me, I would take them out of that number one contendership match and I would put them in to that to that, well, that tag team title match. Personally, that's what I would do. That's what I would. That's how I would. I think it. it's a bit of fair. They've got two ways of getting the titles now, and they should just stuck to one. Yeah. So yeah, I've done that. Um, after the match though, this match was very good, and the way it was done was good. But I like the aftermath of this. You know, after the match, we had medical personnel assessing Shelton's Benjamin's medical condition, and then we had Charlie Hass on the mic. Now Charlie Hass isn't usually the best talker, but I like the way how he was. You know, being real. Being real, you know, talking about the Briscoes, that he's tired of them and he wants their asses, whether it's two or more or not, that added a lot to this segment. Charlie has his mic work at the end of this. And again, it, it helps the storyline. And now I'm really, really looking forward to their final battle match. Well, again, it, it, should, it could have finished with the match, but I think this added a lot yeah, more to what's coming into the future. And Charlie Haas was saying about his family, you just hurt my family, I'm coming to get you. So I'm thinking this is adding a lot more, and it's got us wanting to see this tag match even more now. Yeah, and it shows how adding storylines to a segment, again, makes the segments a lot better, doesn't it? Yeah. Giving guys mic time and stuff adds a lot more to the segments rather than just having a wrestling match. That's true. Um, so I, I thought this is a very good main event, hyping up the final battle tag team title match. Next week we're going to get some, hopefully, some good hype for the Davey Richards Eddie Edwards match on the Go Home Show. I guess that is going to be the main event, so that has to be the last thing we see on the Go Home Show, next, which is next week. It should be, yes. Um, your thoughts on the show overall, then? Okay, great main event, good good opener. Didn't really care about the second match, I weren't really entertained. Inside ROH, it was effective. It had the two segments that I think need to be built up. Mm. So in a way, I think it did, it did a good job this week. Yeah, I mean, you've got Final Battle two weeks away now. We've had hype for the tag team match. We had hype for the TV title match. Um, you know, we've had, t you know, we've t even guys, even though TJ Perkins is essentially in a filler feud, it's nice to see him at least get on TV so he can at least show you what he's about before he gets on a paper I pay view. So in that sense, it did its job. Um, the three matches helped the flow of the show this week. The inside ROH segment was a little bit better than usual. It didn't drag on as much. Um, great main event, a decent opener. Um, so there was a, there was a lot accomplished today in terms of in terms of I pay view hype. Um, they maybe should have announced some more stuff in terms of that tag team gauntlet match because that would have given the opening segment a bit more of a meaning to it, wouldn't it? Rather than just it being a match. Um, well, as they concentrate on the other title, they should concentrate on the tag or to get up in that mm. future. So that was kind of missing out this week. And two tag team matches. I liked the ROH's tag team action. It was good with that. Yeah. So overall, I thought this was a you know I I kind of I enjoyed the show this week. I mean you know it, it was a good show. I won't be I won't lie. It was a decent show. It was a good show. I was enjoyed with some of the matches. Yes. Um. So there we go then, guys. That's our opinion on the Ring of Honor wrestling show this week. Make sure you tune in next week for our review of the next week's Ring of Honor show. And also we're going to do a preview of Final Battle and give our thoughts on it too. Um, so that just leaves, you know, that just leaves me to say, get your thoughts down in that comment section below. And this also leaves NJ to say something that he, yeah, yeah, go on. Say All it. I'm going to say, people, is I hope you enjoyed this show. Have your say in the comment section below. And that has been it from the British Fist, which is Mr. Parkin and me, NJ. Thank you for watching. Tune in for next week and goodbye.